Hi, in today's video, we are going to study what are the callbacks, what is a synchronous request, and what are the promises. A callback is simply a JavaScript function which is passed to another function as an argument, which is then executed inside outer or calling function to complete some kind of routine or action. That means instead of calling two different functions separately, we make a call to only one function and within that function, we along with our arguments, we pass one more parameter and that parameter is nothing but name of another function which must get executed as a part of first calling function. But before we understand callback function, let us revise our JavaScript simple function. A function is performing some specified tasks and these functions are always executed in an order in which they are called and not in the order in which we have defined. Say for example, over the given example which is presented over screen, there are three functions. First function that is we have declared is say hello and second function is say by function and third function is display function now within say hello function we have made call to display function within say by function also we have made a call to display function and these functions are not getting getting executed unless and until we call them so we first make a call to say by function. At this location, say by function is called. That's why control will go to say by function. And within the say by function, we are making a call to display function with parameter goodbye. So within this display function, control will come and the parameters will be stored inside message. Now this message is getting printed over a web page using document.write method. So goodbye with one break line will get printed over HTML page at this document.write method location. Now after executing this particular statement, control will go back to its calling location. So we have called from this display, that's why control will come at this location. Again, this function is completely executed, so we will come back with our control to the calling function. So called, it was called from this particular location. Now control will go ahead. Now control is saying that say hello function is called. Now we will go or move to say hello function. Now within say hello function, there is a display function. We will again go to display whatever parameters are there will be stored inside message. So hello with one break line will be stored inside message and using document.write method we are actually rendering this message over HTML web page. So hello with one break line will be displayed. Control will go back to its calling location. Again control will go back to its calling location. So here important thing is to note that control will always be in the order in which functions are called or I would say functions will be executed the order in which they are called. Now JavaScript callback function. A callback function is the name of function which is passed as an argument to another function. Say for example, there is one function which is called as add, which takes two parameters n1 and n2 and it returns n1 and n2's addition that is n1 plus n2. There is another function that is multiplication function mul mul which again takes two parameters n1 and n2 and returns their product that is n1 multiplied with n2. And we have one more function that is calculate function which takes three parameters. First parameter is n1, 
second parameter is n2 and third is name of operation or name of another function i would call that parameter is callback cl underscore bk for callback now within this function we declare another variable result which stores the result of operation between n1 and n2 parameter but i at this particular point i don't know what kind of operation is expected between n1 and n2 whether n1 and n2 are must get added or they must get multiplied that is not clear that is given at third argument that is cl underscore bk which is the name of function so i will write down result is equal to callback function name that is cl underscore bk and i will pass two arguments that is n1 and n2 which is nothing but parameters of calculate function whatever the value or whatever the result which is being given by this callback function will be stored inside result and we will render this result with the help of document dot write method and printing result value these three functions will not get executed unless and until they will be invoked or they will be called so let me call these function from my original document i will write calculate Pi comma pi. So two arguments and supplying is pi and pi. But what I wish to perform operation between these two is addition. That's why I supply third argument is the name of function for which I wish to call. So calculate will have third argument as add. This add will be stored inside callback, and this callback will call actually add a function with parameters n1 and n2, which is basically pi comma pi in our case. So add a function with pi and pi will be called, and its result will be returned by this function, which is equal to 10. Now this addition is resulted is stored inside variable result, and this 10 will be printed. now after second call another call to make another call is made to calculate function itself again first two arguments are same that is 5 comma 5 but the name of function that we wish to call later on is multiplication that says my calculate function now must call multiplication mul function so instead at this particular point of time callback will be storing value mul and at this location multiplication n1 comma n2 will be called that means control will be transferred to my multiplication function their product will be calculated and returned by result and so uh, this result will store this value and using document dot write i can print this value over the web page so this is what we mean by callback in this callback pass the name of function as an argument and using that argument in my outer function i can print these values now why do we need these callbacks these callbacks are very important in asynchronous function in which one function has to wait for another function to complete its work before it can progress say for example In, before we display the content of file we must wait for loading of a file if file contents are not loaded completely we cannot show its value or it cannot be rendered over web page so callback functions are always passed as a parameter or as an argument to another function and they are still important for javascript asynchronous method Now, what do we mean by asynchronous JavaScript method? So, let us look at synchronous JavaScript method or synchronous JavaScript. In synchronous JavaScript, we maintain the sequence or an order of function call. One function will first call unless and until it completes its execution. Another function cannot start its execution. so here functions are executed in 
sequence in which they are called. Here, call is waited for first and then function executes before it gets executed. Now, synchronous code goes from top to bottom. Say, for example, I declare variable a is equal to 5, another variable b is equal to 10. First, I make a call to method console.log a. So, unless and until value of a is not getting printed or it is not getting written over your console window, next line is not going to get executed. So, next line is console.log b. So, b's value is not going to get printed unless and until value of a is not completely printed. That is what synchronous JavaScript means. Output of this code will be 5 and 10. Now, what is asynchronous JavaScript? In asynchronous JavaScript, no order of function called is maintained. Of course, we will call a function in some order, but the execution of these functions will not be maintained in an order. Take an example. We first print console.log hello. So, string hello will get printed in our console window. After that, we make a call to another function that is set timeout function. Set timeout will take second parameter as 3000. That is 3000 milliseconds, which is equivalent to 3 seconds. So, set timeout will execute its code after 3 seconds. Now, what code it must execute after 3 seconds? The code it must execute is a simple function which simply prints console.log goodbye. Now, what will happen within this 3 seconds? So, for the 3 seconds, this function cannot get executed. So, control will go to the next line. Next line says console.log hello again. So, first hello will get printed. Now, this set timeout is waiting for a delay of 3 seconds. During that free time, it will first go to the next line. It will print hello again. And after the completion of 3 seconds, it will go to this function again and print goodbye. So, output of this particular code is hello, hello again and goodbye. Even though goodbye is printed or called for second function, it is getting outputted and third line. So, it is not compulsory that function is called for second time or it, it is secondly called in an order. Its output will be second in an output. Now, how to write some asynchronous code? Your asynchronous method is set time out that is already asynchronous. But if I wish to write down my own method which is asynchronous, there are two ways. First way is to make promises and second way is to make use of async and await functions. We will only cover promises. A promise only passes if a certain criteria is true. Within JavaScript promises, we can define or we can defer a code execution or we can delay a code execution unless asynchronous request is completed. This way, the other function can keep running without blocking a thread. That means if some function requires some delay or it requires some time to complete its operation, we can let other function to continue its running unless and until first function finishes its execution. Basically, in JavaScript, promise is an object with three states. The state of promise can be one, out of all these three. Promise state can be either pending, that is nothing but initial state of each promise object, which is the initial state of program before promise is getting passed or failed. That means before the completed execution of a function, I must say the promise is pending. Second state is resolved. If promise have completed function's execution successfully, we say promise is resolved. If promise have not completed execution of a function successfully, we say that promise is rejected.
so we can do or we can execute different types of code as based upon different status of a promise object say for example to create a promise here we have declared one variable which is constant the constant variable name is hungry let us say hungry is equal to true we create a promise in a new variable that is called as eat variable which is of type constant that's why we write constant e is equal to new promise object now this new promise is a function of resolve comma reject so this object can either get resolved or it get rejected at run time within this function we first check the status of hungry if hungry is true then we create a new object that is fast food which is having activity cook noodles at location market square and this object will only created when status of hungry is equal to true and will return value resolve fast food that means the object we have created fast food will get as a parameter to resolve function else part which is which says that if hungry is not true that means if hungry is false we reject by throwing a new error saying a message not hungry so this is how promises are getting created now how to use these promises to use these promises we make use of two function first is then function and second one is catch function then function will be executed only if promise is resolved and catch function will get executed when promise is rejected so we create a new constant will eat which is a function of e remember eat is a promise which is created with the help of new promise command that's why eat dot then will get executed when this promise will get fulfilled so eat dot then is a function of hungry so whatever value will be returned by eat function as a result of promise will get substituted at this parameter we will write console dot log we are going to eat noodle and we also write the status that is console dot log hungry so basically in this hungry we are going to get return this food this fast food is getting returned by this so whenever we resolve the request fast food is a parameter that is going to get cached by the end function so in this hungry we will have fast food object and this fast food object that we are going to create with the help of console.log method now if a function or this promise is getting rejected in that case catch statement will get executed whatever the return statement or whatever the rejected status is there will be stored inside parameter error and we are printing error dot message in our example if that is in else part if hungry is not true that is in else part rejected is nothing but new error with message not hungry so in this case error dot message is going to print not hungry so this is how we use promises we use promises by chain then and catch method so in today's video we have learned what is fallback function what is asynchronous javascript and what is promises how to write promises thank you everyone for watching this video this is munira topia signing out